When I started my career in the age before email, it seemed like communication was a lot simpler. There were only a few channels that we could use. We could have a face-to-face -face meeting. We could call someone on the phone. We could send them a letter. And we were all, you know, in the 80s trying to figure out fax machines. Sometimes we would call someone on the phone, draft a follow-up letter, send it via USPS, U.S. Postal Service, and via overnight because this emerging technology of the fax machine sort of created some confusion about which channels we should use to communicate and when. Today is much more confusing than it ever was in the 80s. There are so many different apps. There are so many different channels that you could use to communicate, even in addition to email, that sometimes people find themselves in organizations choosing, like sort of mismatching the channels and missing one another's communication. So it's important in every organization to establish a protocol by which people will align the channels on which they communicate. If you're on WhatsApp and I'm using SMS, or you're on Instagram and I'm on Twitter, we're going to miss one another. There are so many different options, Snap, Kick, whatever they're going to be, that we need to agree on a protocol by which we're all going to communicate together. And this video explains the protocol that I use in my organization, CEE 300 at Arizona State University Engineering Business Practices. There are two criteria to select when we're choosing a channel for our communications. The first one is urgency, and urgency is measured in units of time. How much time does the sender of the communication expect before the recipient will respond or react? The most urgent communications, the sender is expecting an immediate response. And less urgent might be never, never respond, never act. And somewhere in between, I've scaled out two to three hours or two to three days. The other axis is privacy. And privacy is measured in terms of the number of people whom you're expecting to see the communication. When email first showed up in the, for most of us in the mid 90s, what a revelation it was. And there was kind of a rule of thumb that you should respond to all emails within 24 hours, which would put email somewhere in here. But now that we have so many instant messaging maps, email, well, we don't respond within 24. I certainly don't respond within 24 hours. So email is more of a two to three day response time. Now, some people think that email is private, but we've, many of us, have had the experience of accidentally hitting reply all or having an email that we thought was only for one individual forwarded to a larger group. And if you think email is a confidential or private medium, then I can refer you to some oh, presidential election scandals that will disabuse you of that misconception. The point is that Email is a flexible platform that could be intended as private, but wind up as public. So in our urgency and privacy quadrant, we see that email is used when we expect a two to three day response time and that email could be intended for a group, could be intended for private communication, but wind up being public. Now we're beginning to see how urgency and privacy work. And you can imagine populating this entire matrix with lots of different communication channels. We use a platform that includes several different options. It's called Slack. It's been called the email killer app. Now I haven't seen Slack exactly kill email, but Slack has such flexibility that it covers a lot of these quadrants. For example, we have channels in Slack when you use the hashtag or you place the communication in a certain channel, you're tagging that communication as something that belongs to the group of people in the channel. You can also use Slack to direct message people. You can use Slack to tag people with the at symbol, drawing it specifically to their attention 
even if it's placed in a channel that is meant or accessible to a larger group. So Slack is the platform that we use when the urgency is two to three hours, sort of same day service. And it gives us a lot of flexibility to control who sees the message and who doesn't. Slack also includes a call feature. You don't need to have someone's phone number. Slack doesn't reveal the phone number of the person that you're trying to call, but when you're all in the same Slack group, you can use Slack as an audio or video calling service. I'm gonna say here that video calling is, well, perhaps uh, better bandwidth, perhaps uh, it allows greater communication, but I'm putting phone calls in the more urgent than messaging because you are expecting immediate back and forth, immediate responses to what you say, and more private because there's no record of the phone call that is then posted for the group. And of course, the most immediate and most private form of communication is a face-to-face -face meeting. Now we've done a lot of populating the matrix, but there's one other platform that we use in our organization, and that's for document sharing. It's called Box. In Box.com, you can share documents, you can tag people, which will generate an email calling their attention to that document. You can assign tasks, and of course, you can comment or you can message people using the tag. Box is the least urgent of all of these platforms. Email, if you tag someone in Box, it generates an email that elevates the sense of urgency to two or three days. But when we're sharing documents in Box, the tempo of that document sharing is usually on the pace of several days. It's less rapid, than less urgent than the email. Now we have almost the entire uh, space of these quadrants covered. There's just one more that I need to go over, and that's when we have an emergency that needs immediate attention from public agencies. A 911 call is extremely urgent, but of course you gotta remember that it's public. 911 calls are recorded and they can be released via Freedom of Information Act requests and even posted on YouTube or SoundCloud. So if there is an emergency that needs public resources that needs the intervention of emergency management services, please in our class use 911. If there's a private issue that's urgent, deal with it face to face. If there's something less urgent than face to face but needs attention on the order of say 20 or 30 minutes, use the phone call feature inside Slack. When you are requesting or trying to signal that this is a same day issue, use the messaging features in Slack. For items that are less urgent, you may use email and expect a response in two to three days. And finally, for document sharing, we're gonna use Box. Now there's some overlap between these different platforms, that is, you might be between the two to three day and the two to three hour, and that's okay. But there is one thing in the class that is not okay. Never send an email attachment. And that's because we use Box for document sharing. We do not use email attachments. Far better to load the document, whether it's a PowerPoint presentation or a Word file, load it into Box and tag the person whom you want to draw attention to. Never send email attachments. They're an obsolete, archaic, and selfish way to communicate that tears up bandwidth resources and results in confusion. Use Box, our document sharing platform, not email attachments. And you can make Box private by opening up your own folder and inviting only those people to whom you want to share. You can make Box more public by opening up the folder or the file privacy settings so that anyone with the URL can view the file. Box allows flexibility in access to the document. So you have flexibility in privacy and it applies something about the urgency. 
You may also load a document in Box and then post the link in Slack, raising the urgency of the document sharing to something on the order of two to three hours. Now we have almost the entire quadrant populated. There's just this little corner down here, public and never. And that's when you're going to find me on Twitter. You may follow me on YouTube. You may follow me on Medium if you like. But I'm not expecting you to respond to anything that I post there. And if you post comments to me on Twitter or YouTube or Medium, you're not expecting me to respond ever as well. I can't think of a medium that we would use for private and never, but perhaps you'll come up with one for me. In the meantime, we now have a way to select all of the privacy and urgency messages that we can think of and channel them in ways that ensure the recipient of the message understands the privacy and urgency of the communication and the channel which, with which they will respond.